So recently the Lord gave me a dream and I'd like to share that dream with you in this video and also share some other dreams that have transpired by individuals surrounding me and the meaning of these dreams as well as see the significance to God's people as a whole as we prepare for the second coming of Jesus. And so why don't we begin with a word of prayer? Loving Father, we need your Holy Spirit. Please give us discernment. Help us to see where we are prophetically in our need to prepare for the soon return of Christ. Bless us that hearts would be converted and that the truth would go forward. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So on December the 15th of 2017, the Lord gave me a dream where I was leaning my hand upon the doorpost, standing in the doorway of the kitchen. While I'm leaning on the doorpost, I'm on the phone and in conversation while on the telephone, I'm hearing of a massive amount of death, of catastrophe, of many people dying. And so I slowly begin to go towards the floor. And while on the floor, I begin to weep and sob. Unlike I have wept since of the age of 17. I recall at 17, my best friend lost five of his family members all in one day. And it was a tragedy. And so this was the manner of my weeping. And so as I began to pray and seek the Lord, the Lord began to reveal specifically the individuals in Tampa Bay that would soon die. And some of you have heard some of my sermons and specifically mentioning individuals that would die. But in light of this, I want to share some other dreams and what I believe the full meaning of the dream that I had, as well as some of the other dreams of individuals around me. Some years back, my mother had a dream where she saw that a family member of ours was in the city of Tampa and the individual was drowning. And as they were drowning at the last minute, someone came and saved them from drowning. And so that's one dream that my mother had. Then another individual, my aunt, my mother's sister, had a dream where she saw Tampa Bay flooded by water, that it had been completely flooded by water. Then my next door neighbor had a dream where she also saw that Tampa was completely flooded by water. And then one day I was at a Bible study with some individuals that I did not know very well. But in the midst of our Bible study, someone shared a dream where they saw Tampa Bay completely flooded by water. And they also saw alligators were displaced in the process coming after individuals. And so that was some of the details of their dreams. And some of you know in some of our other videos, such as the Blood Moon video and the Tsunami Warning video of Tampa, we shared, we shared the warning in those videos, but also many individuals that watched those videos shared in the comment section about the dreams that they have had about Tampa, St. Petersburg being flooded completely by water. And so in light of this, I want to show you from God's word why I believe that this event is tied not only to the dark day, but that this is also going to bring about a close of probation upon God's people and how this is the first cleansing. We know that the Bible teaches that probation closes upon the church first. Probation closes upon the Seventh-day Adventist church first. And so we're going to see from God's word the connection between probation closing upon the church tied to a dark day as well as destruction by water taking place. Notice what the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 35 to 37. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord, which giveth the sun for a light by day, and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divided the sea when the waves thereof roar. The Lord of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, saith the Lord, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. So God says in verse 36 that the seed of Israel shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Then verse 37, thus saith the Lord, if heaven above can be measured and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, saith the Lord. So here we find in verse 37 that it mentions that God would cast off all the seed of Israel. Well, what brings this about? Verse 35 mentioned the ordinances of the sun, moon, and stars and connection with the waves roaring. 
When the waves roar, that is a tsunami. When the seas roar, that is a hurricane or a cyclone. And so here in Jeremiah 31, we're seeing the connection of God casting his people off. In other words, their probation closing upon the Seventh-day Adventist church and a dark day tied to a tsunami. That's what we're actually seeing here in Jeremiah 31. But obviously, we must have more than one witness. Another passage, let's go to the book of Amos chapter 8. Beginning in verse 1, we'll read down to verse 3. It says, Thus saith the Lord God, showed unto me, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then said the Lord unto me, the end is come upon my people of Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. So God is saying he will not pass by his people anymore. And we know that Israel in the last days are the Seventh-day Adventist church, whom God has given his truth for the world in this last generation. Now notice what it says in verse three. And the songs of the temple shall be howlings in that day, saith the Lord God. There shall be many dead bodies in every place. They shall cast them forth with silence. So in the beginning of Amos 8, God brings to view not passing by his people anymore. And then he says there'll be many dead bodies in every place. Death. Now let's skip down to verse 8. It says, Shall not the land tremble for this, and everyone mourn that dwelleth therein? And it shall rise up holy as a flood, and it shall be cast out and drowned as by the flood of Egypt. So in verse 8, you're actually seeing a tsunami. It says that the land trembles, and then the water will rise up holy as a flood. So when the land trembles in the ocean, that causes a tsunami, and it takes over the land. Then it says in verse 9, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day, and I will turn your feast into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation, and I will bring up sackcloth upon all loins, and baldness upon every head, and I will make it as the morning of an only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Notice it mentions the bitter day here in light of connection with what happened in Egypt. And when you look at Egypt, the last plague before the firstborn was the plague of darkness, three days of darkness. But we know that God is not going to do three days of darkness in these last days. God is going to give a dark day in connection with destruction by water, which was how Pharaoh's army was destroyed via the water that closed in upon them after the children of Israel crossed through the Red Sea. So again, God showing the connection through the experience of Egypt. And we know that God's firstborn in these last days are his people. God's firstborn, Israel. Oh. So again, we saw here close of probation on God's people in verse 2. We saw a dark day in verse 9 and tsunami in verse 8. Again, this is the second witness that we're seeing a connection with dark day and death with close of probation. Now let's go to another passage. Let's go to Amos chapter 5 verse 8. Seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion and turneth the shadow of death into the morning and make the day dark with night that calleth for the waters of the sea and pour them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. So notice here, God again brings to view a dark day in connection with the waters of the sea. Another witness. Notice what it says later on in the chapter in verse 17. It says, and in all vineyards shall be wailing for I will pass through thee, saith the Lord. So notice again, God says in all vineyards, they'll be wailing. Again, death in all churches. Again, showing a close of probation upon God's people at the dark day in connection with destruction by water. Remember the parable of the vineyard that Jesus gave, where he talked about miserably destroying those husbandmen and letting out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which would render unto him his fruits. And in that parable revealed in Matthew 21, God is showing again what would happen in the future that has not yet transpired within the church. That parable has more application to the end of time and is bringing to view the destruction that would come around the dark day as God closes probation upon his church. 
Let's move on. Amos 4, verse 11 through 13. The Bible says, I have overthrown some of you as God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah, and ye were as a firebrand plucked out of the burning. Yet have ye not returned unto me, saith the Lord. Now notice, God says, I've overthrown some of you. This is the first cleansing for the church. The first cleansing is at this event of the dark day. God is showing us again that some would be overthrown at the dark day, and then some will be overthrown at the Sunday law. These are the two cleansings. Remember, Jesus cleansed the temple twice, as well as Gideon had a two cleansings within his army. First, 30,000 to 10,000 and 10,000 to 300. Two cleansings by Jesus and two cleansings in the days of Gideon. Notice what the Bible goes on to say in verse 12. It says, Therefore, thus will I do unto thee, O Israel, and because I will do this unto thee, prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. So when God does this, he's saying, look, prepare to meet Jesus at the second coming, that the end of all things is at hand. Now, when we look at verse 11 again, we have to keep in mind what happened at Sodom and Gomorrah. God revealed to Abraham before Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed, he revealed what would happen concerning Sodom and Gomorrah. And so God says history always repeats itself. Ecclesiastes 1.9 and Ecclesiastes 3.15. Therefore, showing us God would do the same thing in these last days. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Notice what it says now in verse 13. For lo, he that formeth the mountains, and created the wind, and declareth unto man what is his thought, that maketh the morning darkness, and treadeth upon the high places of the earth, the Lord, the God of hosts, is his name. So again, God says, maketh the morning darkness. Again, revealing this takes place at the dark day. Now, let us come over to Amos chapter 5. And look at what it says in verse 1 to 3. It proves the fact that there are two cleansings within the church at the end of time. It says, Hear ye this word which I take up against you, even a lamentation, O house of Israel. So a lamentation is a weeping, is a mourning, and usually people mourn for death. Verse 2, the virgin of Israel is fallen, she shall no more rise, she is forsaken upon her land, there is none to raise her up. For thus saith the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave a hundred. That's the first cleansing. Started with a thousand, went down to a hundred. And that which went forth by a hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. That's the second cleansing. Went from a hundred to ten. Showing again two cleansings at the end of time. The first cleansing is at the dark day. Probation closes upon the church and the gospel goes to the Babylonians, goes to the world. Then it says Jesus even spoke of this event when we examine Luke 21 and verse 25. Notice what Jesus said. Luke 21 and verse 25 it says, And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. Again, showing signs in the sun, moon, and stars in connection with perplexity of nations. This is what we're seeing now in our society. You have protests in the UK. You have the Brexit issues going on in the UK. You have the protest in Hong Kong going on. You have government shutdowns taking place in America earlier this year. You have uncertainty concerning the presidency who is now under the investigation for impeachment. This brings uncertainty. It says distress of nations with perplexity. We're seeing this all over the world now. Many people are striking. Many people are protesting for various issues such as abortion, same-sex marriage, LGBT rights, and all these various things. Again, showing us probation is about to close and Jesus is coming soon, and there's a need for a spiritual preparation before Christ returns. It last mentioned in verse 25, the sea and the waves roaring. Personally, I really believe that we are going to see a tsunami in the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. Now, that flooding can come by another means, but due to the majority of the dreams that individuals have shared they have seen tsunamis 
coming to the Tampa Bay St. Petersburg area. Brothers and sisters, with the fact if this event were to transpire on a dark day, the reality of the disaster is unfathomable because if there would be darkness, there would be flooding, and if the tsunami comes by a earthquake, the potential for cracks in buildings to be there could be catastrophic and alligators on the loose. This is a terrifying event that could soon take place. So if you know anyone living in that area, please let them know they need to move far away from the Tampa Bay St. Petersburg area. To the extent of the damage, only God knows. When this will happen, only God knows. But brothers and sisters, let us spiritually prepare. Let us spend time with Jesus. Let us surrender our hearts to whatever Jesus is telling us to do. Let us confess and forsake all sins. Let us examine ourselves before the throne of God, regardless of how others may be living a frivolous, careless life, whether in the church or outside the church. Let us prepare spiritually for what is soon to break loose upon this earth. Jesus is coming soon, brothers and sisters, and let us prepare by prayer, fasting, and Bible study that we may obtain a born again experience and receive the former and latter rain as we prepare for the soon return of Jesus. Please share this video with others that they may be warned that they may move from the Tampa Bay, St. Petersburg area. God bless.